Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of First Look. Today we're taking a look at Battletech Aces. This is an open beta that is running concurrently to the Battletech Mercenaries Kickstarter. It's going for the next two weeks, um, and it was kindly sent along to review and try out by the folks at Catalyst Game Labs. So um, this is available to any of the backers right now. You can grab the open beta cards and give them a try. Uh, but they were nice enough to let me give it a shot as I also reviewed the Alpha Strike box set um, and I had all the miniatures painted and ready to play it. So what is this? This is an AI deck for playing either solo or cooperative games against an AI controlled enemy in Alpha Strike. Um, you get in the beta eight cards for the five or four different, five different? Four different. Unit classifications, Brawler, Skirmisher, Sniper, and Striker. Um, and this allows you to basically have an opposing force that is not under your control that operates in a random manner. Um, the rules are currently, at, like I said, in an open beta in this testing, there is like a form for providing feedback, but there's two missions provided. We're gonna give them both a try, the first one today and the next one in two weeks. And I'm gonna do a little review um, on I just played on my um, Patreon, you can check out as well. Uh, but yeah, for now, it's designed to go along with the Battletech Alpha Strike starter set, although there are some guidelines for making forces and balancing them for like, either a easier or harder challenge mode to see if you need to tweak that a little bit. Uh, and you could use your own forces as well, as long as they're balanced. Uh, the first introductory mission pits two clan mechs against a uh, light recon lance of inner sphere mechs on the table. So we're gonna use the stuff from the Alpha Strike starter, play it exactly as intended out of the beta rules, and we'll show you how this works and get it underway. All right, so here I'm set up ready to try out the um, Aces rules with my Alpha Strike starter set. So I'm just using the contents of the box because um, first look is all about giving you guys an inside peek into uh, rule sets that will be coming out but might not be in a finished condition. So I want to follow the guidelines as best I can so you guys can absorb the experience the way it was intended by the designers. I've done my arts and crafts. I sleeved and cut out um, the 1632 cards for the four card decks. You get eight. I have no idea if that's the final card count, but eight seems like it's enough to give this game a go. I painted my miniatures. Um, so you can see my Northwind Highlanders over here and my Clan Wolf. Um, what was this? The I don't remember what the actual color for Clan Wolf this was. I had to look up and I was like, I wanted something that was different. Uh, it's a red Keshek. That's what I did for Clan Wolf here. Um, I want something that looked different for my Highlanders, and originally I was just gonna paint them as other Highlanders. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I didn't make them different. So uh, adding to my Clan Force is another battle star, um, this time of um, the Red Keshek Clan, or Clan Wolf. Uh, and then of course, we've got the rules themselves over here, uh, printed off to go through the overall, so um, like mechanics of the game. So what do we need? Well, um, we need our decks, all cut out and put together. Uh, our AR card, our card anatomy is described. So you have your priority, it goes from lowest to highest. So the higher the number this is, um, the later it will activate in the activation sequence for the AI. And then it's classification, which is what kind of battle mech it'll go to. You're allowed to mix them up if you want, but the game might not function as intended. So you should put like a skirmisher should have the skirmisher deck and a sniper should have the sniper deck and, and so on. Um, and then your card front has first your priority number, which is again, when you'll activate. Uh, lowest go first, highest go last. Uh, and then you have your deck name and your card ID, and then the move phase section. So uh, you have your move first. So if you have one priority with the AI forces and they're gonna move first, the first thing will be, if they are first, they will do this. Uh, then it's priority. So um, it'll be different move types. So ground, jump, uh, sprint, and, oh geez, what's P? Uh, oh no, that is, yeah, that's sprint. And then S is standstill. <laughs> the P is also for sprint. <laughs> Uh, and then stands to the last one. Um, so I'm gonna just put another another letter in there. Uh, and then so the following that was the, the priority what they'll do if 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 then. So if they're first, uh, for instance, this brawler will jump to 12 inches from the nearest enemy, and no enemies in line of sight or woods in cover from the most enemies. So those are all like the keys of what it will try and do. And then if it's not the first mod activating, it'll do ground movement towards the highest health enemy, then ground movement towards the biggest threat enemy. Uh, ground movement uh, towards the fewest enemies in line of sight, so like running away. Uh, ground towards highest PV, ground towards nearest. It's gonna try and fulfill as many of those as possible in order. So usually towards the highest health unit. If they've all got the same health, then the biggest threat, which means usually the most damage. Uh, if that's all the same, then towards the fewest enemies in line of sight, so like to retreat. If those are all the same, towards the highest PV, and then nearest if it's all, if everything else is like equal. Yeah, what it does in the combat phase? So the, first, the combat phase has a series of tags. And those are the combat instructions of what it's going to try and do. Activate in the same order that you activated by uh, your initiative or whatever. Um, and these will be, uh, generally speaking, um, 
like uh, again in in the order of can you do them one's target lowest tmm if it was flipped up it would be target highest tmm then can destroy so can destroy means um does it do enough damage to actually like destroy that model it'll target them instead and then otherwise nearest and so these priorities basically will try and create a situation where you know who it's going to randomly target it's all deck generated it'll be different for each one and you might get a different result depending on what card you draw it's themselves making it also different uh meaning that you know the situation can change and a lower qualifying thing can happen and that's basically it so now setup today the meet and greet scenario the player controlled units i get 100 pv i get a blackjack a phoenix hawk a wasp and a locust and they're all just basic mech warriors so right from the start set we're going to take away all the heavies this will be what i'm actually allowed to control today uh now it's a blackjack 5 uh 4m phoenix hawk 5a wasp and a 7v locust and for the red keshek we have two very elite lighter um uh, Omnimax, we have the Nova T, which is skill two, and then we have the Pouncer Prime, which is also skill two. So we're going against some monsters. We are a skirmisher and a sniper, so I'm gonna grab those decks, put the other ones aside. And so cards and decks are put together, and it said put the AI units roughly in the center of their straight up fight uh, deployment zone, so 12 inches on in the middle, and then I can deploy my uh, player controlled forces wherever I like. All right, and so I'm deployed, that means that my forces are arrayed 12 inches on as well for a straight up fight, so I have my Wasp, my Blackjack, my Locust, and then over here my Phoenix Hawk from the Northland Highlanders. Take it on the Red Keshig, so standard, roll for initiative. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be the big dice, the Alpha Strike Star set. I grab some little dice. They'll be the red Keshig whenever I need to roll against each other. So I get an 8 to a 4, which means I have priority, and that means that they have to move first. Of the decks, the top card's priority is going to be the Skirmisher, uh, or the Sniper, depending upon who has the lower of the two ratings. At 236, the Sniper is the lower, and it will flip first. Phase, if first, ground to within 30 and line of sight of the most enemies, and then Woods and Cover... Uh, from the most enemies. Pouncer has a movement of 12 going ground, uh, and it would be able to see one, two, three enemies. It won't be able to see the wasp moving over to here within 30 and cover. So, right there. I have the cover from the most enemies as well, and that gives it ground movement. Right now, because uh, there is an unequal number of models on the table, I will have to activate two of my battle mechs before the red Keshig goes. Well, let's get our blackjack on. Now the blackjack can walk a stomping eight. He's gonna go two, four, six, eight. Hunker down and also take a look. Ground movements and then I have to do a second one. So the Phoenix Hawk will make a run for it. Uh, he can go 12. So he's gonna go four with ground as well. Four and then four. I do say to try and face as many models as possible at the end of the uh, movement, so when you're choosing the facing for the AI controlled units at the end of it all, um, you want them to be have as many of the things they can see be in their front arc as possible. So you can't cheese their 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 facing. There's a good note. Only one other model left, the Nova T, so it's gonna go. And I'm gonna cover up its combat thing so I can't see it. Um, I, it's gonna be um, jump if the lowest health enemy unit has not yet moved into the woods or cover from the most enemies. Wasp and my Locust. They're both lowest health. Um, neither of them have moved. That guy's gonna make a jump move uh, into woods cover from the most enemies. It'll be a jump of 10 this way into the woods, which will then give him cover from all the enemies. Jump move. All right, so the remaining inner sphere mechs will go. We'll start with the Locust. He has a massive move of 20. And the whole plan here was to do the old banana on the tailpipe. So we're gonna go eight to there. 16 and then four more just go park behind this guy they're like surprise classic locust behavior Keep that uh that uh nova t in our front arc uh and then we're gonna run with the wasp as well i think he may actually sprint because he can sprint 24 inches so that's three of these one two and then three around the back and we'll try and try and take him from behind because we're not very skilled but we're fast so we're gonna sprint over there and hopefully be able to get them later. Combat phase, and that means that these guys have to fire first, starting with the lowest of the initiative, so 236. Uh, starting with a model it can destroy. The Pouncer Prime has three at all ranges um, and can also overheat. No overheat on here, so it won't use it. So can destroy anybody? Uh, is anybody with three damage? No, because it can't see the Locust and it can't see the Wasp. So that goes to lowest TMM. The Black Jock is TMM 1, <laughs> and the Phoenix Hawk is 2, and that's all it can see. So that's what it's going to do. So 
the player uh, will roll for the AI controlled units. And that means with a skill of two, it's gonna be three, four for being over six inches of range, five for TMM, six for cover. So the six is gonna blast the blackjack. He does. Three points of my armor comes off. You know what he's gonna go then? Um, and he has uh, revealed, can destroy. He does six damage, <laughs> oh my god. Well, he can see the blackjack, he can definitely destroy him, but he can also see the locust, who he can absolutely destroy. <laughs> um, so I think we go with the easiest to hit then, and that would be the locust, because he's in a shorter range and has no cover. He can destroy everybody. Uh, it's lowest TMM then, which would be the blackjack. All of, all three things he can see can be destroyed, because uh, even the Phoenix Hawk only has... Actually, he can't destroy the Phoenix Hawk, he can destroy the other two. So it would be lowest TMM, which means he's going to shoot the blackjack. Two, four for jumping, five, six for range, seven for TMM, eight for cover. Does he land it? He does not. Woof! AI combat phase over, back to the uh, Inner Sphere Max. With you, Locust, skill four. Um, that guy moved, which means he is team M2, so five, six. That is all you're getting, but he's damage two goes to three because he's in the rear arc. Uh, so on a six, he's gonna do three damage into that pouncer. Sure does. That's pretty good at almost blowing him up. So we're over now to my Phoenix Hawk, who is skill four, five, six for range seven, eight for TMM. Can he land some more damage on that pouncer and maybe finish it off? Nope, he misses. All right, Blackjack, it's all down to you because you're almost dead. Um, you are skill four, five, six for range, seven, eight for TMM, nine for cover. You'll do three damage if you land it. And you do! And I was lucky, but we blew up the Pouncer Prime. Wasp sprinted, so end game phase, we remove the Pouncer because he's been destroyed. Let's end round two. Well, peace trading aside, that was very lucky for the Inner Sphere. Uh, and this is just an intro scenario, so I'm not super worried about it because we almost lost our other guys. Uh, and the Inner Sphere loses initiative this time around to the Clan Wolf. So we move all of our movement markers, and that means the Inner Sphere needs to move first. To commit, so fully outnumbered, three guys are going to have to go first. And I think we're just going to try and surround them. So we'll start with the Wasp. He's going to just jump 16. Ah, he won't even jump 16. He'll just jump to here. And be ready to shoot. Jack's just gonna strafe and move two back so you can still see that guy. And then along comes the Phoenix Hawk. He wants to get in the war. He's gonna go 12, so he's gonna go eight to there and then four more and hug this corner. Let's see what our AI deck says for the Nova because he can kill anything he can see right now. So if first, he's not first, so uh, G towards the furthest enemy that you can get behind. Ground movement to go behind someone if possible. Furthest enemy you can get behind. So he won't be able to get behind the um, Locust, but he can definitely get behind the uh, Wasp. So he's going to go one, two to get out, to go an inch, and then he can go another ten inches, no, eight inches. So two, four, six, eight, Boop. ground movement. Just leaves the Locust going twenty, can he get behind him again? Eight, eight. And then four, not quite, but you can get close. Having lost the initiative, the Wasp gets nothing. Uh, the Locust can try and take a shot. He's only doing two damage now. So that's two damage uh, at skill four, five, six for TMM. He hits again, so two damage to the Nova. Leaving it with three armor. The Blackjack's over 24 now, so that's gonna be four, eight for range, 10 for TMM. And he misses. And it cannot see through the woods because it's too, uh, too many inches of woods in the way there for the Phoenix Hawks. That's all my shooting. All right, so let's see what the combat phase says for the Nova. It says shortest range. Well, guess what? That's going to be the Locust. <laughs> now he's skill two, um, but that guy is TMM four. That's an insanely hard to hit Locust uh, for a total of six. Now, if he lands it, though, he's just dead because he's six damage. Sure does, so the Locust is exploded. So end phase, Locust comes off because he's destroyed. I've lost my speedy hitter, and it's round three. Initiative, let's see who goes first. Uh, that's a seven for the Inner Sphere, that's a 10 for the clan. He has to move again first before the clan flips their card. Uh, and we will start with, we're gonna save, I think, the Wasp for last this time. But I am gonna have to move two for one. The Blackjack is going to move again. He can walk his, I believe, eight. He's not super fast. He's gonna come over to here and hide behind this. Whew. It's the same with the Phoenix Hawk. He's gonna go to this corner and hunker down. Flip the deck for the 
Nova, it's going to jump towards the lowest TMM enemy. Blackjack, and he has a jump of 10. So he's gonna jump over behind this building because he always tries to stay in a cover if he can. And he always tries to put his front facing towards as many models as he can. So he's gonna jump over there. Towards is not directly towards, uh, as defined by the rules. And he will play smart, you can't just move into the open. And he's done. The little wasp can do his jump. Whew. And land in the woods. We backshot this guy if we survive. All right, so we lost the initiative roll. So what does the Nova do before we get to go in the combat phase? So starting with can destroy, well that's anyone he can see, but he can only see the blackjack. I think he can kill the blackjack, can he? Blackjack has four health left, so yes. <laughs> then um, the next one would be greatest threat. The blackjack, because that's all he can see. So he's gonna shoot with skill two, four for jumping, uh, five, six for range, seven for TMM, eight for cover. Does he land it? Six damage will destroy the blackjack. He does! He'll still get to fire back though. Let's just do him now then, combat phase. Skill four for the blackjack. He'll do three damage if he lands this. So four, five, six for range, seven, eight for TMM, nine for jumping, 10 for cover. Does he land any damage? He does! Oh man, so he slams three more damage into him. And that strips off the remaining armor on the Nova. So Nova's doing great, but he is down to just structure remaining. KG. Uh, we lost somebody else, we lost the blackjack. So the um, other mech that can fire is the wasp. He'll take a back shot. Skill four, five, six for jumping. Um, and then seven, eight for TMM, uh, nine for the other guy jumping. Misses. Runners come off and it is getting, we're running out of Intersphere Max, but we've definitely, we've got this guy on the ropes if we can get to go, you know, relatively early. All right, so round four initiative. Let's see who's going first. Eight to eight, it's a re-roll. Intersphere ties. Oh, the clan wins again. The Phoenix Hawk's gonna have to go first and commit. So he's gonna jump back to here. Well, not jump, just move. It is 12, get behind this building for some cover. The AI deck says for our unit. Uh, not first, so G where most enemies are in line of sight. So he's gonna move ground, he can move 10. He's gonna try and get to where the most enemies can be in line of sight. So if he goes eight and then two more, He'll have all these guys in line of sight. As we can go, it's gonna cost us two to get out again. Leave this woods, and then that leaves us with 14 to get in the back arc, if we can do this. So eight, and then six more will put us back here, and the wasp just keeps chasing this guy. Wasp, maybe you can finish him this turn. Shoot first, because we lost the initiative yet again, so we'll start with the Phoenix Hawk. Uh, he has a overheat potential, but he doesn't need it. He'll just kill this guy if he lands it, so there's no point in doing that. Skill four. Five, six for range, seven for eight for TMM, nine for cover. Lands it, oh, we did it, we killed the Nova. But he still gets to fire back. And what about the Wasp? He misses completely. Does the Nova take us with him? He will just, I think, straight kill this Phoenix Hawk. No, he won't, he'll leave him with one health. Uh, can he overheat? Uh, he has can destroy, and then shortest range, and then no cover, and then nearest. So nearest would be over here. Wasp is in line of sight, so skill two, three, four for range, five, six for TMM, seven for cover. Lands it, and that's a crit. So one, two, three, four, five, and into the hull, which means he's in retreat at least. What's the crit? A six, I think that's just movement, or weapons. Either way, not dead. This is the game on turn four with the Nova destroyed. There is a on fire smoking wreck of a Phoenix Hawk and a Wasp remaining. And all in all, considering I had numerical advantage and these guys were badly outnumbered, not a bad little demo. They lasted longer than I thought I would. I tried to play the like run behind you and kill you while you can't do anything game. And they mostly outsmarted me. So interesting. Now what's what's nice about the card decks is eight cards is enough for eight turns uh, per classification. Um, more cards would just mean that more like of the same class could be on the table, but I think you would you would without having to shuffle them, you would at least be able to get through four turns uh, with like two of each class, which is not bad. And I, can, I feel like is a, a decent like amount of not having to shuffle yet, like options. And this is just the beta, who knows, there could be more cards than like the final deck. Even just 12 cards, six and six. Six turns a pretty average game alpha strike. That's, that felt like it didn't intrude too much on my gameplay experience. And the staged like options were clear enough and concise enough. I did like the idea of like putting that the card underneath here and having it next to it. And I do feel like if you're gonna have, like clan forces are almost perfect for the AI and having like upskilled, more dangerous, you know, heavier tonnage mechs for the AI is probably going to be better 
the game feels like you'll enjoy it more if you don't have to manage as many models on the AI side as you do on your own side. Um, and be a bit more compelling. So this does feel like a cool monster hunt almost kind of game, and I like the fact that they had highly skilled clan mechs against my, like, kind of underdoggy inner sphere Northman Highlanders. Uh, the train amount of the star set felt right, so if you're going to try this yourself, I think this is more than enough stuff to give it a go. Uh, and we'll try it again next week with a full complement of models from the starter. So full um, battle star and two lances of inner sphere Northman Highlanders fighting each other on Wednesday next week. So you got my GMG first look at the Battletech Aces card driven expansion for AI solo and co-op gaming in the Battletech Alpha Strike universe. Now, um, I, I'm gonna save like my final impressions for after I play the Clash of Steel scenario, I'll see that next week. But my first sort of like overriding thoughts are the card system is easy. Um, it is the perfect sort of like interface because all of the actual like units are on cards as well. Uh, to quickly flip and know what that unit's doing. My impression, I think, stands that smaller, more elite forces for the AI are probably going to be the norm, and I'm hoping whatever the literature is that comes with this when it's all said and done kind of influences that. It does feel like a system that requires a little bit of player agency um, in making the best, worst decision for the AI forces. You want them to do the meanest thing to you they possibly can. Uh, and of course, in any solo and co-op game, there's got to be sort of like a lattice, a support structure for keeping you from playing the AI to your own advantage. Um, but this seems to do it pretty well. Having at least three to five steps of what you will do if, uh, and then default to nearest, means you can't game the computer as much. If the first three to four selections are things that you wouldn't choose to normally do yourself, that level of like chaos and predictability makes for the game being interesting. And that first little encounter we had came down to the wire. Um, the, uh, the Phoenix Hawk could very easily have died from that critical hit, and there was a couple other times, I think, that you could have just been smoked, uh, and losing the, um, the Panzer right away, uh, probably put the, 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 uh, Red Keshek on a, like a back foot, the Clan Wolf on a back foot. So, I'm interested. I gotta say I'm interested. I think this is a cool way to handle, like, using a physical asset, like a deck, is a cool way to handle an AI. Other things have done it, but it's more been like just a flowchart on one. The fact that this changes every activation as it flips is interesting. Obviously, does it scale as a question? Um, playing against it more often, how does that work? In our next mission, we're gonna have two models share the same deck, and we'll see how that burns through a little bit faster and stuff as well. But overall, I, I'm, I'm intrigued. I think this is gonna be neat. We'll see how it goes next week after we see the full uh, I think it's like 200, no, 300 point. It's a full 300 point game, basically, handled by the AI on the Clan Wolf side and then myself on the Highlander side. So, but thanks for watching. We'll see you for more first looks in the future. Until then, I'm Ash. Have a good day. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.